Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. Derek Gunn, Rob Ellis hanging out with you on this Tuesday. All right, so uh, Pat Sajak at 76 years old announced his retirement. He will uh, finish out. I think he's going to go until the end of this year or something like that, and, and then he's going to finish up. And so 2024, there will be a new host of the Wheel of Fortune. Uh, Sajak's been doing it since like 81 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ryan Seacrest. Huh? Oh, uh, here's the thing. This dude is so overexposed anyway. Are you serious? Kelly Lee, whatever it's called. Regis. What is the show? You know, the show I'm talking about. Yeah. He, he was on that for a while. He left there. Uh, live. I think it's called. Um, he, you know, uh, American Idol. She still does. And he does a nationally syndicated radio show as well. Um, do we need more Ryan Seacrest in our life here? Uh, no, no, <laughs> no. Are you serious? Out of all the people they could have picked, they picked. Yeah. I, come on, man. I'm sorry, but I'm just not that interested. I'm, I, I don't. I'll be uh, frankly. I don't watch <laughs> Will Ford. The only game show, the only game show I watch is Jeopardy. Yeah, yeah. It's the only one I watch. So <laughs> I don't really care. But I just, I'm sick of the dude. He's the white Steve Harvey. He's the white Steve Harvey. Harvey. He is. They, they both have 78 jobs, you, you know, and, and it's just, oh, my God. Yeah. So. Hey, look, God, God bless you. If you can get that many jobs, you know, yeah. and you and they're paying you that kind of money. Oh, he's making you, serious coin. Yeah. You ride that way for as long as you can. But of all the people, if you would ask me, d gun name 10 people who you think would be a great host for, for Wheel of Fortune. He, he would not have been on there because you're right. He's so overexposed. Uh, I, I I don't know, man. I, you know what? He has he must have one heck of an agent. That's the, that's the only way I can see it. His agent must be so well-connected in the industry that people just just roll out the red carpet for him in, in any venue whatsoever. I, I don't get it. I don't get yeah. it at all. Yeah, I, I don't know. You're right. I mean, he just – and the other part is just can we get a little creative? I Like, I get it. For the audience that they're – they're catering to, um, <laughs> dank. <laughs> uh, I, look, I, maybe I am being a little hypocritical here. Maybe, yeah, could be. Uh, are you over? Rob Ellis is the Ryan Seacrest of Philly sports talk. Not, not, not wrong. He's not wrong. Are, are you? Are you overexposed, Rob? I don't know, man. I don't know what I am. I know I'm not making Seacrest money. I can tell you that. Really? Um, but um, I, I just think like they're trying to cater to sort of the, that middle America. They don't want to offend. Seacrest doesn't offend. He's great at reading a prompter. You, you know what I mean? Like they're, they're good. They're not going to take any risks. Right. And, and that's what you get. Like that's, that's what you so, get. So what's going to happen? What's going to happen to Vanna White? Is she quitting too? I didn't see anything on her. Um, I, I don't know. I didn't, I, I think she's still doing it. I think maybe they, they probably would want to bridge both, you know, her and, and the new host, I would think. Hey, without, look, with totally Vanna's changing still, things. Vanna's still strong, even in the twilight of her career. I agree. Oh, I but, mean, I'm going to get. Yeah. All right, I'm going to look up. How old do you think Vanna is? Let's let's let's. Just I would up. say got to be at least sixty, close to sixty, maybe. I'm saying 60? older. I'm saying. Older? I'd say sixty-seven. Okay, sixty-seven. Okay. Uh, sixty-six. She turned She's sixty-six 66. in February. Yes. Dude, think about this for a moment. 66 years old, you're making a minimum five million a year just walking out, throwing your hand up in the air and turning a letter. Mm -hmm. You're turning a letter, dude. And you don't even work a full year because they tape yeah. so many shows in such a short amount of time, they spread out throughout the course of a year. Mm -hmm. Dude, you get like 30 weeks off a year. I keep doing it. I would keep doing it until they tell me you're not doing it anymore. Yeah. I'm doing it. You're okay? right. Yeah, I can I can carve a month out a year. To go turn letters, okay? I'm good. Let me tell you something. Five million a year. Yeah, that's all I would do. Yeah. But 30 weeks a year out of out of 52 weeks. Yeah, 25, 30 weeks. What? You, you better. Five million? You, you better change the locks for me, or else I'm going to be in there doing <laughs> doing it. Okay, I could tell you that much, man. Um, yeah. So Seacrest is the guy. All right. Anyway, moving on. Um, no. So I, I, I'm trying to listen to as much of this stuff this week as possible, Derek, when it comes to um, 
NBA free agency because we're we're on the cusp of, uh, of it Thursday, so we're two days away from it. Oh, gee. Where it starts, right? But part of it is these guys have to make the final decision whether they're, they're going to opt in or opt out of these player options that they have. So Harden has a player option uh, going into the season for about $36 million. Everybody knows he's opting out. That's not even a question. But So then it becomes, okay, where's he going? How much is he getting? I don't think there's much debate anymore. It's the Sixers. From everything we're hearing, Houston's out. Phoenix is already out. They made the trade for Beal. I don't see anybody else stepping up here. Um, now it comes down to how many years. So Brian Windhorst of ESPN said, the Sixers' entire offseason focus has been re-signing Harden. Jeez. You just killed my t- – and the sun just came out. It was raining this morning. The sun is finally out. I'm happy I'm going outside to work in the yard when it shows. You just killed my mojo, man. I know. So I'm he's sorry. not the only one. Mark Stein, who covers the NBA, Kendrick Perkins, who covers the NBA, or it all basically this is a foregone conclusion that this guy's coming back. Uh, and, and there are some that believe – that he might get more than two years. I'm like, oh come on, man. But but here here's the most here's a basic principle of negotiation. You need leverage when you're when you're when you're you know laying out your side of things. You need an option. You need an alternative. What is Harden's alternative? If if the Sixers say, we'll give you two years, man. That's it. That's all we're giving you. What's his options? I don't get it. Um. So basically you're telling me they're going to run it back with the same nucleus. They priced Tobias Harris out of the market to the point where, as we talked about yesterday, the way we've heard the stories about what they were asking from both Phoenix and Cleveland for Tobias tells me they didn't want to get rid of him in the first place. Now you're telling me all these multiple sources who are well, you know, well versed and, and deep within the behind enemy lines and the NBA, you know, scuttlebutt. Are all saying that Harden was coming back here and he always was? How excited are you about this team coming up this fall? Think I'm about not. it. Now, you are, you are born, bred, diehard, Philadelphia, true blood, through and through. How excited are you about this upcoming season? I'm not, Derek. I'm not at all. And, and here's the thing. Usually when you feel the way that I feel, it's gonna it's like a flyer situation where they're going to you know win like 10 games. This team will probably still win 50 games. But I can't get excited about that at all, you know, because I know how it ends. I know they're going to be able to beat. Okay, here's who they're going to be better than. They're going to be better than Brooklyn, Atlanta, Toronto, Atlanta, Detroit, Indianapolis or Indiana, uh, Charlotte, Orlando and Washington. That's great. So they'll probably get somebody in the first round who they can beat. That's great. <laughs> right. <laughs> they'll get somebody in the first round who they can beat. Okay, I've seen that too. And then here we go in the second round. When you're either going to get Milwaukee or Boston or Miami or maybe even Cleveland if they take that that next step forward. Or the Knicks, if, they, if either one of them take that step forward. And then guess what? It goes bye-bye. Because you don't have enough or because Joel's hurt and because Harden can't doesn't play – huge in game seven or six like how many more times can we watch this and hope the ending's different um as long as the Sixers put it on the court that's that's the only option you know if you like basketball and you love Sixers you're gonna watch yeah there's gonna be a lot of misery involved but you're gonna watch plain and simple and because of what we do we have to watch we have to watch this night in and night out to see how it unfolds the only the only possible saving grace is could a change in coach change about bring bring about a change in this this their mis their fortunes. Yeah, okay, new- that's a fair point. It, it, Nick Nurse is a fair point. Okay, um, if there's anything I can hang my hat on is that they'll be coached differently, and, and maybe he can reach them in a way that that. Brett Brown couldn't, that Doc Rivers could. Maybe. Okay. I mean, or could he rub them the wrong way? I'm okay with that. I look, I would rather him piss them off, quite frankly, you know, get under Joel's skin a little bit or and or not take some of the nonsense. I'd be good with that. They well, obviously the enabling hasn't helped. And I think Doc Rivers did try to get 
Like he even said, uh, there were sometimes he was like, Joel, I need you to play. Like I, I, I applaud him for that. But I, some of this stuff is too ingrained, I think, from the process years. I agree. And if you got the same group of guys, you got a, you got a new coach. Now, obviously, Nick Sirianni was able to do it with the Eagles, but football is a different, a whole different mindset than, than than basketball. So you got these guys who were under Doc Rivers, who did it Doc Rivers way. Now you got a guy coming here who said, "We're going to play better defense. We're going to do this. We're going to do that." And on top of that, if Harden's coming back, if the rumors are true that Harden basically went back to being James Harden, hoisting up shots when he wanted to. Could he butt heads with Nick Nurse? If Nick Nurse, if Nick Nurse wants him to be something else other than what James Harden wants to be, how long would that marriage last? Yeah, I know, I know. It's, You're right, but but you know what though, Derek? Maybe there, maybe if that's the case, it's time to start weeding things out anyway. If, if he, if if you know, if a guy trying to get you to do something differently or motivate you a different way or speak the truth to you rather than just kissing your rear end. It angers you. Maybe it's time for you to go. See, if I if I was the Sixers as uh, after Nurse was hired, I would have immediately said, James, need you in Philadelphia. I know you're in the club. You got to get out of the club, bro. I need you in Philly for one day. Uh, you need to sit down and, and, meet, and do a meet and greet with Nick Nurse. Let's see if we're on the same page. If there was any inkling that that, that James Harden might have a problem with Nick Nurse, I get up from that table and say, James, I just want to thank you for your contributions over, over the last season, uh, but we're moving in a different direction. Yeah. Even well, though you know it's going to hurt. I I, go. I, I, let me say I agree with you, okay? I, I, first off, I agree with you. I, I mean, I couldn't agree with you more. It would be impossible. But th the other thing that I would say to that is, too, this is where the negotiation goes for me. Like, James, we're offering you two years, you know, whatever the money is. I'm not so much worried about the money. I just, it's about years for me. If you're not satisfied with two years and you want more, then thank you for your service. And right. you should, you should get, you know, you should go somewhere else, man, because it's not happening here. But I, I can't, I can't imagine Maury does that. I don't know. I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I'm not, I'm not offering James the 50 million. I'm saying, James, what'd you make? 35 last year? We're offering you 36 and a half this year. Sorry. That's it. That's all we got for you, brother. We're trying to build something here. And if we give you that 50, we're really going to be right back in the boat next year like we are this year, cap strapped again. Yep. We're trying to build something sooner rather than later. Hey, I look, I know you're mad. We're not giving you the max 50 per, but this is our financial business blueprint right now. Do you see yourself being a part of it? You don't? Oh, Hey, uh, you know, uh, good luck in Houston, wherever you're going, because mm -hmm. um, uh, that, that's the best we can do for you here. Yeah. But like I you said, and people keep saying it in the chat, and I keep saying it on Twitter, Maury's going to buckle and give this dude what he wants. Yep. Yeah. And that's that's another reason why I can't, I can't get excited. I'm telling you, man. Like, th But this, I believe this. I think this is going to be the year. I had this discussion with Mike Sielski last night. Right. And, and he – he was on the side of, I think they're still going to show up this upcoming season. I, I'm not telling you the attendance is going to drop dramatically, but I think no. we're going to start to see less sellouts this year. I do think it starts this uh, year. Especially if this team is losing more than is winning. Yeah. With James Harden back, with Tobias Harris back. Yep. Oh, yeah, people are going to sour on this real quick. I agree with you. I agree with you. All right, let's get a timeout. Let's get back to the NFL discussion, Derek. We'll look at some of the top free agents that are still available. Could the Eagles be in the market for any of these guys? Uh, I'll tell you how quickly a, a game that's going to be played in Europe this year sold out. It's going to blow your mind. And we'll do continue our greatest series. We'll do the greatest players from the Miami Dolphins. Yeah. All right, so we'll do all that when we get back. Don't go anywhere. He's Derek. I'm Rob. We're Sports Take. Jacob Sports YouTube Network. Let's talk about Flynn Tree Services. Yes, they are an experienced, licensed, and insured Pennsylvania tree services company that will trim or remove any unwanted trees off of your property. They are experts at trimming all types of trees, and they serve southeastern Pennsylvania, South Jersey, and northern Delaware. Flynn Tree Services specializes in tree removal, stump grinding, as well as tree pruning. You go to their Facebook or Instagram page for more information or a sampling of their work. Give Flynn Tree Services a call at 610-850-2848. 610-850-2848.
2848 or online at flynntreeservices.com. That's flynntreeservices.com.